Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be testing out some new makeup. I am going to be putting to the test the new Fenty powder as well as the new extremely expensive La Mer powder. I've got Vivid Rose on my eyes, Lawless, NARS, several different things that I wanted to try out. I'll just get ready with you guys, play around in some newness, and if you want to see how I created this look and the products that I used, just keep watching. I'm going to be testing out two different powder foundations today. The first one is from Fenty. This is the Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation in the shade 230. And I'm going to be using my MAC, oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've used this, the 170. And I got to tell you, my skin is not, 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 not in amazing condition. Uh, me and Gucci, or Gucci and I, <laughs> we need to have a talk. <laughs> but I'll get into that later. So yeah, I have... I have just some acne scarring, not really scarring, but um, redness and whatnot. Most of it has gone away, but my biggest concern is dryness. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, I, I let, um, yeah, I'll get into it. But I'm going to be testing the Pro Filter on this side and then a super duper expensive one on this side. And I've actually used, it's from La Mer, that's why it's so expensive. <sighs> They're so ridiculous, but I've actually used that one before. I got it, I want to say about two weeks ago, but I didn't intend to use it as a foundation. I just wanted to use it as like a touch-up powder, and it's supposed to be a little bit more of a moisturizing powder, <laughs> moisture-esque. <laughs> so I thought it would be a good one to use or to test out for touch-ups, and I've got to tell you, I already know that it's great for that. But I want to put it up against this one to see which one works for <laughs> combination skin and right now dry skin. I mean, it's not my, I wouldn't say super dry. I was so dry the other day. Uh, what was it? I want to say it was four days ago. I had, I stopped filming because I had, I think it was the primer to be completely honest with you because I had put the primer on this side more and <laughs> this side did not get as bad. This one, it's like I had a chemical burn almost I had some type of a reaction to it uh so I think I think it's the primer I don't know it could be the foundation but just based off the fact that I was putting the primer on this side so much more when I was testing against different primers testing out the foundation and all of that I have a feeling it was the primer and I have a little spot right here I'm trying to see if this foundation will cover it and clearly I already have my concealer on I already have it set when I do powders, I like to do that first because you're not going to want to put your concealer on top of a powder. Now, the reason why I'm using this 170 is because I'm literally pressing this into my skin because I want more coverage today. <laughs> I want my skin to be smoother and I want more coverage today. And this is actually looking really nice, especially with the state of my skin. I'm telling you, I am so dry. I've been putting <laughs> oil and that's not something that I always do. I used to do it, but I have been just like putting oil and then Aquaphor on top of that just to get my skin back into a softer state. So I'm much better, but the uh, I just have not been able to film because I didn't want to put anything on my skin. And then uh, yesterday, today is New Year, so happy New Year. Yesterday I did something only I would do. Well, I'm sure other people would do it too, but um, it's a very Mel thing. I almost forgot to do my nose. <laughs> I dropped a 30 pound kettlebell on the top of my foot. <laughs> it was not even working out. <laughs> All right, anywho. This is looking really, really good. I'm, I'm honestly shocked. I just, I'm so used to powder foundations not looking great on dry skin that I'm just like, okay. And you can use, so if you go in with a fluffier brush, you can get a softer application, less coverage with that method. You can also go in with a sponge if you wanted to, like a damp sponge, but make sure that it is wrung out really, really well because you don't want to get hard pan on your powder. But you can do that as well. You'll get more coverage that way. And that's, again, why I wanted to use this. But if you use something softer, 
like, let's say the smooth buffer, this is just going to buff it into your skin. So I would say that the coverage on this is a high medium. I don't think it is full. And the reason why I don't is, I don't know if you guys can see, but right here I have a vein and my skin is translucent and I can still absolutely see straight through this. I hope you guys can see that on camera, but I think it looks so nice on the skin. I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to use this brush and I just wiped it off. I mean, it's powdered, not liquid, so it'll be all right. Now I'm gonna go in with the La Mer powder. This only comes in 10 shades. This comes in 50, <laughs> way better. But to be completely honest, I have no idea what the shade range of this looks like. I'm gonna insert a little picture right here. There's purple, yellow, there's all different just random color swatches that are not obviously accurate. I'm pretty sure there's not actually a purple foundation, powder foundation. Could be wrong, but I don't think that there is. So I, I would just go based off of the pictures. But honestly, I have no idea what the shade range of this looks like. I ordered it, so I don't know. And I am using the shade 12 Pearl. Let's see, I hope that these match. No, this one's definitely lighter than this one. I definitely like the color of this one better. You know what? I purchased two of these. I want to see if the other one is closer. This is number 21 rose. I can tell you that I looked at these up against my La Mer liquid foundations and they are not the same color. Of course, with powders, you have to be, it's a little bit more tricky to figure out your color because once your natural oils from your face kind of come through, it deepens up the powder a little bit. So I would suggest using something like Fix Plus or whatever setting spray you would like, and that will help it to just immediately go to the color so you know what it's going to look like. And I know that if I were to do that on <laughs> just this side, it would probably be as dark as this one, but <laughs> then I would be a little bit more of a radiant finish on one side and not the other. So I'm just gonna leave it like so. I might go in with a spray later, but for right now, I think I actually got more coverage out of this one. Add a little bit more. I can kind of still see some discoloration right here from sun damage. This does have a scent to it. Not a strong one. To the other, I don't smell anything with this one, but you know, La Mer, <laughs> they definitely have a fragrance. I'm going back in with 12 Pearl. I just like it better, I think. Neither one of these feel, I know I'm putting on a lot of powder. I know, <laughs> like I said, I want, I want coverage today. But just looking at them both in the mirror, I don't know if it's just the color, but I'm liking this side. Yeah, I feel like my pores look better on this side. Yeah, I don't think it's just the color. I think that it's, yeah, I, this is accentuating my pores. It definitely is. I mean, I, I know that I like this as a touch-up powder, but as a powder foundation, this one looks better on pores for sure. I have a brand new Sunlight and Suntan Jouer bronzer, so I'm gonna use that on my V50. Did I get right? Yeah, V50 from Isom. I'm just gonna add some color to my skin. And the, the more and more I'm looking at this, I just like this side better. I'm not a huge powder foundation lover, as in to wear it as a foundation, but I love them as touch-up powders. Sigma E25, I'm using this with the same bronzer to contour my nose. Go back in with that brush I used for the foundation. Just go and blend that out. 
I'm gonna start my eyes. I'm gonna come back to my skin afterwards. I have two, well, technically three different products. The first one is from Lawless. I told you guys I really wanted to try this out. Been really impressed with the brand and so I'm excited to try these. It's the Bio Eye Shadow Champagne Dreams and then also, what is this one called? Sparkling Rose. These are biodegradable, hence the bio glitter. Well, let me see, ooh, look at this. This is really pretty. Ooh, I wanna touch it. Which one is this? <laughs> Sparkling Rose. Ooh, that's stunning. I hope it adheres well. <gasps> ooh. Okay, now let me see the other one. This one is more of a bronzy gold. Oh yeah, it's definitely gonna be this one. <laughs> this one's so, I mean, this one's pretty too, but this one, oh, that is that is so pretty. And then I have the Vivid Rose Palette from Give Me Glow Cosmetics to complement the glitters, but I have to swatch, just like, look at this. Look, mm, and this one, these are so Pretty. I mean, Give Me Glow has an amazing formula, but I was just sitting in the floor <laughs> and I was swatching these and I just immediately fell in love. I don't know if I'll be able to use them in today's look just because I'm going to be focusing on that glitter and I'll be using mainly the mattes out of this palette, but I just, I, <laughs> I cannot wait to get these on my eyes at some point. Bristles Beauty EO2 RL and he loves me. I'm going to pop this on my outer corner first and then blend upward. This is a really pretty color too. It's not what I anticipated. Looking at it, it looks a little bit more purple, but on my eye, at least in the mirror that I'm looking at, it looks a little bit more of a purple pink. And I'm working this into my crease circular motions to blend it upward. Same brush and talk dirty to me. You know what this reminds me of? I just realized it reminds me of the Violette palette from Viseart. Like the purples in here. I've got to say that Violette palette. Um, it's one of the best purple palettes. I've ever used. The blendability of everything and how smooth everything is, is just incredible. Building this up just a little bit. I'm taking it into the crease and slightly blending upward. My camera will overheat after 30 minutes and then I have to wait. So uh, yeah, I went ahead and finished off this eye. And now I am going to go in with, I forgot. <laughs> I remember he loves me not on a refer number 14. And I'm going to pop this on again, the outer corner to add some depth. And I have a little funny story to tell you guys. <laughs> so this is kind of spoiling my thoughts just a little bit. Well, I mean, I guess probably not too bad because I already told you a little bit, but, um, Ooh. This did not happen on this side, but I have a little patchy patch right there. I don't know why it's happening on one eye and not the other, but it is. That's a little patchy patch. That's This is why purples are so difficult. Even if they're great by themselves, sometimes whenever you try to layer them, that happens. I'm not going to worry too much about it because I'm going to be putting glitter on. But anywho. <laughs> so I went and after I finished this eye, I asked Puffin which side of my makeup he liked better. And he was looking back and forth, back and forth. And he's like, are you talking about your eyes? <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, obviously this one is done and this one is not. He's like, oh, okay. And so then he started looking at the foundation, the powder foundation. He's like, oh yeah, this side looks smoother. Most of the time he's like, I don't know, I can't really see a difference. But this time he said it pretty quickly. He liked this side better, which is exactly what I thought. But this one, I'm like, I see, I, I feel like it's getting more and more obvious, at least to me that, I mean, it's just poor city over here. I'm going back in with my Bristles Beauty brush and just going right around the edges of that last shade. 
BK Beauty 206 and a little tiny bit, a tiny bit of a pop of pink. Just a little bit and I'm gonna go right around the edge of everything. Just on this outer corner, not everything, everything. <laughs> Guns and Roses on a refer number three. I'm going to buff this right underneath my lower lash line. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of flower power and I'm gonna place this right on the outer corner of the lower lash line. Refer number 21, I have this wet, and this is the Bio Glitter from Lawless in Ro Sparkling Rosé. Now the reason why I have this wet, I used Fix Plus, is because when I went, I feel it going all over my face. When I went to put it on this eye, it, uh, it did not adhere as well as I would have liked, so I just got it wet and it's much better. I still can get it, it's still gonna go on your face. It is glitter after all, but it works much better just using it wet. And you could use something like glitter glue and it would be good as well. It'd be even more intensely held. But I wanted to see if you could just use something like Fix Plus. I'm bringing it up just a little bit higher after I get the majority off of my brush. So I get the sparkle a little bit higher than the crease and then lightly over the purple so we can cover up that little patchy patch. Back in with flower power on the refer number three. And I am going to tap this right on my lash line on the top and about three quarters of the way. And I want to bring it all the way in. Bristles Beauty PO6 RF and Pink Rose. And I'm placing this on the inner corner I'm gonna drag a little bit of that right underneath and then slightly upward, just blending it in. After that, I'm gonna go add on liner and mascara. After I finished off both eyes, I took a sponge and cleaned up the outside edge of both eyes just to make it a little bit more crisp. Moving on to cheeks, I gotta tell you, I'm a little nervous because <laughs> I was swatching these and I, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm hoping that they go on the skin better than they go on to my hand. These are the new NARS Air Matte Blushes. And I have three different shades. Got the shade Orgasm just because, I mean, it's NARS. <laughs> so I wanted to go ahead and try this one out. And this is the first one that I swatched and as you can see, I have this little, <laughs> my nail mark going through it. And I wanna show you this because it happened with all three shades. So I put it on and you see that? That's before I blend it in and it just disappears. <laughs> I was like, uh. So I did that with the next shade, which is the one that I'm going to use. This is, no, 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 this is Freedom. This one, I think it's a little too dark, so I'm not gonna go in with that. And I would swatch it, but it, it disappears. So uh, <laughs> the one I'm gonna use is the shade Darling. I really hope that this is not terrible because it's making me nervous. But I thought this would be really pretty with the eyes. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Let me figure out which brush I wanna use. I'm gonna take my BK Beauty 108 I'm gonna dip straight into the little pot here. And it has like this airy, moussey type of texture. And it's almost kind of silicone-y. I don't know, all right, let's see. I'm gonna start a little further back just in case this doesn't go well. I'm just stamping, okay, okay, so <laughs> it does go on better than what it went on to my hand. That's good. <laughs> ah, I'm telling you, when I saw that, I was just like, mm, I don't know what's happening here. So this is why <laughs> swatches are not always everything. It does make me wonder though, if you weren't wearing a lot of makeup, you wanted something kind of like a liquid blush and you wanted a more natural look, but you didn't want it to be too shiny. This is obviously, it's in the name, it's a matte blush. 
I wonder if it would adhere or if it would disappear. And then I'm going to go in with just a little bit of my YSL all over 3D glow powder. I don't want to use too much just because I know I have a little texture on my skin right now, so I don't want it to accentuate too much. All right, all right, not too shabby. Now let's finish off with the lips. I have all of the new Natasha Denona lip liners. What are these called? The I Need a Nude Lip Crayons. I went ahead and picked out a shade that matches the lipstick I'm gonna use. I think I'm gonna do a video showing all of these colors, so I don't wanna swatch them right now. You guys let me know if you wanna see that. I kinda wanna do it. I kinda wanna do it. Today, I'm gonna use the shade number NB1 Michelle. I have a little bit of balm on, so I'm gonna wipe that off. After I lined my lips, I went ahead and took the shade and I put it on my hand so that we can test out the longevity whenever I go over my thoughts. Now for the lip product, or the second lip product, and the last product of the day. Again, from NARS, these are new, and it's the Air Matte Lip Color. I have four different shades, and I'm going to go ahead and swatch these. This was, again, another video I was planning on doing, but I'm trying to play catch up right now. <laughs> this is the shade Joyride. And again, these have like that, uh, they're a little bit more airy. I would say they're a little bit more airy than the MAC ones, like the Powder Kiss. Oh, I really, really like those, but I'll be able to tell a little bit better after I put them on, or at least one of them. This is Thrust. Leave it to NARS. <laughs> Leave it to NARS. This one is right up my alley. It's called Total Domination. It's not the name that I'm like obsessed with. It is the color. <laughs> this is just one of my favorite go-to bold shades. Like a corally red. So pretty. And then this is the one that I am going to put on. And this is called All Yours. I think it matches the liner really nicely. I feel like I'm able to see my lip through the product just a little bit. Not bad. And I know that sometimes that happens with lighter colors like this, but I can definitely see it. And it kind of moves around just a little bit. It might be better with a primer or possibly even with the liner all underneath. Again, I will have to update you, but that's my first impression with the lipstick. I like the color. I feel like I need to clean up just right around the edge. All right, so first impression is, feels nice on the lips, it's nice and airy, but I do think it's a little, it's a little thinner and it moved around just a little bit more than the MAC one. Just first impression is I do like the MAC one better. I'll have to try out the other shades, but it's not an absolute hit. I really like those Powder Kiss liquid lipstick. I think they're so nice. But I will test out the other ones and I will let you know. Now, let me test out this liner. Uh, my table is such a mess. Just a little paper towel. Yay! Oh, you guys know how much I love a long wear liner. So this is this is great. And I like the color. I'm going to have to test out all of the other ones. I do. I think I'm going to do a video and that way I can see all the shades. You guys can see all the shades. I really love Natasha's lipsticks. I think they are so amazing. So it's really nice to have liners that go on along with them. So liner, so, so nice. Lipstick is okay. Now let's go on to the face. Let's compare the two powder foundations. <laughs> Fenty, I mean obliterated, in my opinion, the La Mer powder, which is nuts. This is $125, this is 36. How many grams are in the Fenty? 9.1 grams, and then in the La Mer, there's 9.5. So a smidgen more, not really anything. It's, it's a smidgen, <laughs> but it's $125. I know that I like this as a touch-up powder. I think it's really pretty. I've used it around my mouth. I've used it on my pores, which is so strange because when I've used this on my pores and just, I've used it underneath my eyes and just brightened this area, 
it looks beautiful. But then today as an actual powder foundation, I'm not feeling it. You know, I feel like it has maybe a medium coverage. It definitely does not have as much as the Fenty. And I don't like the way my pores look on this side. And that could be, I would say maybe it's a little bit more hydrating than the Fenty one, but I don't feel a difference on my skin. Like this side does not feel dry. This side doesn't feel dry. Nothing like that. For me, the clear winner is the Fenty side. And even Puffin thought that. He thinks he's an expert now. <laughs> he said, I know. He goes, I know these things. Uh, he said the other day, it cracked me up. He goes, I hate that I know what combination skin is. <laughs> he's, he's watching a movie or something and somebody said it on the screen. He was like, I really don't like that I know what that is. <laughs> he's, but he's an expert now. So, I like this. I'm not going to tell you that I don't. I do not think that it's $125 worth. I do not think it looks good on my skin as a powder foundation. I do like it as a touch-up powder. Will I repurchase this? No. No, I will not. Will I repurchase this? More than likely. <laughs> I haven't tried this one as a touch-up powder, but I'm just assuming that it would be a good one. I'm it just It's melting into my skin really nicely. Originally, it looked good, but I feel like it's just looking better and better and better as time has progressed. And it has been a few hours because the chair hurts. <laughs> the chair is making my foot go throb, just throb. So I've, I've gotten up a few times plus the camera thing. So I'm really impressed with this. I mean, really impressed. I just thought, oh my goodness, it's gonna be terrible because my skin is so dry right now, but I love the way that this looks and the color is really pretty. This one, I was, it matches my skin just a little bit better, but that's because my face is lighter than my body. This one, I just, Fenty wins. There's, it's just the clear winner. To me, this side of my face just looks a million times better. Vivid Rose from Give Me Glow. Uh, the colors, the colors are everything. And this pink, if you were to pack this on, do you see how bright this is? And it's so pretty. And I love the metallic shades in here. The only disappointment was this shade right here. I have no idea why it got patchy. I don't understand why it happened on one eye and not the other, but it is something to consider again. But purples are just a little bit more difficult to formulate. The palette though, I'm happy with it. I really like the eye look. It's just something you're gonna have to play with and manipulate where you can. Honestly though, <laughs> would buy this palette just for these three shades. <laughs> but if you have the Violette palette, I wouldn't get this unless you just like the pinks and whatnot in here because it is pretty similar. I just didn't realize that until I started putting it on my eyes. And I do have to say that the Violette purples are better. They're, they're better. They just blend just a little bit easier and they're so Smooth. Still so happy that I got this though. So happy. The Lawless Bio Glitter in Sparkling Rosé. I feel like this just sets off the entire eye look. I love the sparkle. Obviously it's glitter, but you're going to have to treat it like a glitter. It is what it is. It's pressed, but you're going to have to add something to have it adhere just a little bit better. Otherwise you are going to have it all over your face. And I like that you can use a setting spray or fix plus or whatever to apply it and that it still stays. It faded just a little bit and I did get a few more going on my face, but again, for it to be a glitter and still go on like that, it's kind of in between. I would say it's not, it doesn't have that adherence like, uh, what is it? Nabla, oh my gosh, they have those pressed glitters and they just, they adhere so beautifully, but they are bigger. This is smaller and it's biodegradable, which is really nice. And I like that it's pressed. So it's not a loose glitter. It's not gonna cause as much fallout as one of those. You're not gonna have as much of a mess, but the Nabla ones are going to be easier and have more adherence. I'm very happy that the NARS blush did not disappoint me. It's not nearly as pigmented as it is in the actual pot, but it's beautiful. I love the way it looks on my skin. I had to build it up just a little bit, but it blended out really nicely. I love the texture. It's a matte, but it's more of like a skin or a natural matte, a satin matte. It's really, really pretty, and I'm just I'm glad it did not blend away to nothing. I was like, worst case scenario, where we're just gonna go in with the Vivid Rose and put on one of those shades as a blush, but I'm glad that I didn't have to. Again, I'm gonna test out the other shades, and I'm gonna see what it looks like on top of my regular foundation routine, as well as if I was gonna do a no makeup look, is this something that you would be able to use, or would it disappear? 
I will test it out and I will let you know. Those are all the products, but I do wanna quickly update you on the lip because the texture has definitely dried down a little bit more. It does come off just a tad bit. <laughs> so the Vivid Rose stains, just, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but my lips are feeling slightly dry right now. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I really like the color, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Anywho, beauties, that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed getting ready with me, testing out new makeup. Let me know which side you guys prefer. What did you think about everything? And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.